Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, we are going to be making a gothic style bottle opener. So sit right down, uh, grab a bag of popcorn, and enjoy the ride. Let's get to it. So before we begin, it's important to say that I'm working with a piece that is six inches long or 150 millimeters long, three quarter inch wide or 18 millimeters wide, by half inch thick or 12.5 millimeters thick. For everybody there, hopefully that'll help you. And we're gonna lay on about two inches or 50 mil of material and create our first set down. So here we go, let's get this going. We're gonna put the three quarter side up, lay about two inches of material on and hammer half on, half off blows, straight down. And we do not want to correct the spreading of the width. There you go. We're going to take that down to roughly quarter inch thick or six millimeters thick. And we're going to leave it there. Go ahead and get one more heat on this. Now using the cross of our cross peen hammer, we're going to focus down on the very tip of what we just drew out. And we're going to draw this out in width. And you should end up with something that looks like this. We can always refine this shape by coming back here. And we're going to refine those edges up. And then we're going to lay it back down and clean up what we just refined. There you have it. So I'll clean up the front edge here just a little bit with some back face hammer blows, and then we will move on to the next part that's actually going to be the bottle opener mouth portion. So we're gonna give ourselves a little bit of a courtesy bend here out of the way, nice and close. Don't have to bend it too far. We want it to be nice and close to the shoulder. Then we're gonna take our hot cut hardy, put it up in the anvils, hardy hole. And then with that nice shouldered bend, we will come right here and we will just drive that material straight down to take and separate ourselves out kind of a mouth of material. That we will later refine that mouth a lot better here in the future, but we just want to kind of separate that out right now. So once you get that step portion done, then we can go ahead and put this back in order. And that side is effectively done for the rough forging. And we're ready to move on to the other portion before we go any further on this end. Now we've created that little bit of a biting jaw. We just wanted to take and get this straightened back up now for our next stages in this process. Make sure you clean up whatever issues of transition you may have at this point. We'll clean that up on the corner of the anvil. It's a great way of doing it. clean up that profile ever so slightly. The cleaner you can make this stuff 
and squarer as you forge along, the easier each individual process is going to be. So now that we've created that little cut-in portion, that's what will actually hook on the bottle itself, uh, whatever your drink of choosing may be. So now we're gonna go ahead and flip this around and we're gonna grip it by this other means over here and we're gonna work on the opposite end of our Gothic uh, bottle opener, if you will. I'll have to get another pair of tongs and I'll be right back with you on that process. Okay, starting with the fishtail on top, we are gonna aim for a cube of material or just a little more than a cube of material and half on half off blows. We're going to take and set in a shoulder, leave it fairly thick, roughly about three eighths of an inch or nine mil before you go much further. And we're gonna take off the corners of that and that's gonna become a bit of a snub end. We're just radius that off back face hammer blows, get a true radius on that the way we want it to look. And then come back in here and straighten her up. And I'll take one more cleaning up heat, but hopefully you guys can see how that's coming out. You just want to remove the apexes here as you clean it up. But this is starting to progress here nicely. Okay, so once you've got this to a point where you've got your rough forging done, you want to go ahead and brush this down really good. And we are going to end up soaking this in pickle. And after it's done pickling, we're going to let this cool down all the way, hopefully with least amount of mill scale possible on here. We're gonna let her take and soak. I shouldn't call it mill scale, just forging scale really. The mill scale is all gone by now. But we wanna have this really nice clean forging all cleaned up. And then we are going to file all the surfaces smooth and take out any lumpy bumpies that we may have and take and file all the profile of this piece. We wanna go ahead and go around this entire piece to make sure it's profiled nicely before we move on to our next step. The next step we will do is cold chasing. We will come in with butcher tools and uh, initiate lines that we will deepen with a heat later on. But we want to come in and initialize those lines uh, cold so this way we can be accurate when we come back with actual heat so we can get the work done. Once that is accomplished, uh, there will be another round of uh, cleanup work or cold chasing, if you will. And then that will then get turned into the bottle opener. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. I'm going to go ahead and let this uh, cool off. And I'll be back once this is pickled and all that good stuff. And uh, we will, I will have all this filed up when I come back with you and we'll be ready to go on to the hot chasing step or cold chasing step, I should say. Okay, so we've officially gotten to this uh, cold chasing stage. Now, I'm going to do something a little bit different. It's actually uh, just kind of an elapse of time. It's been about a month since I filmed the previous section of this video and I'm just now getting back around to this project. So bear with me here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I kind of had to speed a few things up as we had some different things come up in our life that were without our control. So anyways, uh, but I'm back to filming it during this video and let's try to make it as coherent as possible. So I've already done some of the chasing on this piece, like on the other side, the flip side, and I'll show you that here at a later clip when we go to heat this up and bend it around. I just want to show you that the same process applies what's what I'm doing here as to the other side of the bottle opener. Basically, we are using a butcher tool like what you see here. It's just a single edge butcher tool. Butcher refers to anything that has a leading edge. That, that means it pushes away material. So if you can look, if you can see how that looks right there, the material gets pushed away via this surface right here, and then it cuts down through the piece like so. So anyways, 
Uh, you Basically, you want to strike yourself a mark for a center vein. And then we're going to come down with this tool and just hammer straight down, just like as if you were chiseling something off. And what this does for you is this essentially pushes the background away from this center ridge. You want to use the flat side of the tool against your layout line as you come across it here. Now one of the tricks of doing videos like these, especially when you get into this stage of the process, is the fact of, like, this is a very long process to do this. Um, and again, you know, it's a little easier done hot, but then it's less controlled. So with something, a smaller piece like this, I've just decided to do it all cold. And uh, it'll also make the video a little more expedient uh, when it comes to the editing. So after you get that portion done, pushed away, if you notice this side here looks kind of smooth and radius, hopefully you can see that on camera. That's what you're going to do with a flat or a square planishing tool. You can make these in all different sizes. This is just happens to be a common size I use quite a bit, but you're gonna take and hammer the background away. You're gonna use that to take and hammer the material away. And as you're hammering the material away, you're rotating the tool. And that's gonna give you a nice smooth, it's gonna radius off any of that angled texture that you get from this. Hopefully that's making sense. So you've got that angle there, it's pushing it away, but it's also leaving a flat spot, like a sharp line. So you're coming along there and you're removing, you're removing that flat line as you go along and rolling it and radiusing it. That way it doesn't look like you just cut right down into the piece. So once you've done that a little bit and you've created a little bit of space, this piece here you'll notice is kind of pushed up a little bit. And I'll show you what, why that is here in a second. We'll go ahead and hammer this up. Go ahead and hammer this part right up, okay? And then you're gonna come back in with your butcher tool and we're gonna use this as a pushing tool. So we are actually, instead of chiseling straight down like you would on this side, we're gonna roll it around 180 degrees and we're gonna get it right down in that groove and we're gonna hammer down into this. And what that's going to do is that's going to push that ridge up for us. This is going to rotate around a little bit. You guys can just be prepared for that. That's going to happen. Sorry. I'm right in the camera action. Try to switch hands. You guys probably still can't see. But anyways, so you're going to push that tool in there. It's another difficult thing about videos like this. It's very difficult to do that. So you're hammering that piece and you're getting it to slowly push a ridge up. So this way that ridge is going to stand proud of the surface. We're just very lightly using this. If this thing swivels around, I've got it locked down the best I can. Give this a... Tool's getting a little, a little stuck there. E -e -e. All right, there we go. Tighten that back up. Get that tightened back down. There we go. All right. So once you do that, you're going to start creating a ridge. The next thing after that is we're going to take that ridge that's been created, again with a planishing tool, and we're going to start pushing it more towards the center, and then rounding it off. It's going to be a little annoying. This is going to move around a little bit on you. Just work with it. We're just wanting to remove the sharp edges off this center ridge. And all we're trying to do is roll this thing into a radius to where we have this nice center vein and ridge. The last part is just a simple fuller line, fuller mark. If you notice right here, I've got a double fuller. We started with the inner fuller, which is indicated by this black Sharpie mark here. And then I fullered along the outside edge and outer fuller. 
Again, we'll file profile this all a little bit later, um, just for sake of time, since this is already a really long video, I am going to do that off camera. I'll try to show this technique in a lot better detail in other videos, uh, because it really just deserves uh, an entire video in of itself. So we'll do that. But the tool tools that I used for that is I used a lot broader fuller. That's a eighth inch fuller and a 16th inch fuller. So that's a 16th inch radius and that's an eighth inch radius uh, to take and do the fullered lines along here like so. I also use this piece right here, which is a slightly larger uh, fuller to kind of get the thing started since it's not so long, it's a little easier to control. So I'll show you how I do that now. Basically you come right on top of your black line you've chased that, that you've drawn on here and then you just hammer and you just take little bites and you try to take and follow generally the line that you've laid out, your layout lines. If you get a little off to one side it's not a super huge deal at this stage. Remember you're going to be doing some additional planishing and things later on so you can allow yourself to have a little bit of license here if you if you wander a little bit. You'd obviously you don't want to wander too much and end up leaving a gouge, but it's not the end of the world if you if you don't get exactly right on where it needs to be. You can always adjust that a little later on as you're fullering through the piece. So now I'm going to line this up again. Make sure I'm in line. All right. So once I got those little choppy marks done with that one, then you can come back with a longer, straighter fuller and really set that home. And that will help clean up any of those little choppy mark lines. And we'll end up really making this thing look good. And this is where we'll start straightening that fuller groove out. Now, one of the things I want to mention here, you can take and draw another line here if you want as a guide. I usually just eyeball it with the fuller. It's a little more speedious. Um, and it just works. It works the same. It really does. So I don't worry about it too much. And we're just going right down this piece, giving it good solid taps. By the way, I'm using an eight ounce hammer. Just so you know. And I'm using with the eighth inch wide fuller. Make sure you go all the way out to the end. Make sure that fuller goes all the way out to the end. And so that's basically it. We are just following this right along. Hammering that fuller straight down. As you can see, you can do quite a bit of work cold. And you don't need this to be hot in order for the metal to move. And the deeper you go, the cleaner that will end up being. And again, now we can planish that side like what we have that side to be. Um, and it will start looking out a lot better. So that's it for this portion. I'll go ahead and leave it here. Again, it really deserves a whole video in of itself. The next portion I'll come into, again, this would be a 16th fuller. We would go down along the outside edge to give it that fluting look like you see on the closest side to you, or hopefully you can see in the video that. Uh, again, I'll finish up doing this technique. The ridge, I raised a center ridge down the other side of the piece. You'll see that in the next video clip when we go to heat this and finish shaping this into what will be the, uh, you know, this Gothic bottle opener. So without further ado, let me get this finished and we will be right back with you. Okay, everyone. So I've gotten all that filed up, cleaned up as good as I could, chased out 
Um, now we're down to that final crucial step, making all this work come together at the very end. So the first step we need to do is we need to put a little bit of a curve to it to follow the snub in scroll, and then we're gonna do our reverse scroll for our fishtail scroll. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. Got this good and hot. And I've got a slight depression in this wood block. And we're gonna use a wood mallet for this as well, because we're wanting to give this a little bit of extra curve. The wood supports it just enough where you can make that happen. And the kinetic energy from the hammer caused this to flick up, which gives us the curve that we are looking for. So give that straighten and we are good to go. I'm gonna move this down for a second. Okay, straighten out on the anvil just a little bit. That way we're keeping it square. We don't wanna lose the squareness of this piece. There we go. We got it all perfectly filed square, so we don't wanna lose that. We're just making sure that that's all working out okay, which it is. So I'm gonna drop that down, try to regrip this. Be very careful with your tong placement placement now at this point at this point in time. Because if you place the tongs on your decorative parts that you've filed and you've chased in, or you get carried away and you hammer this on a edge of an anvil where it's not supposed to be or something like that, some of the decoration. Uh, you can end up creating dents and dings and things like that, and that's not gonna be no good for the final result. All right, now the next part won't take as long. Now that this is all heated up here, we are gonna go ahead and get this portion heated up. That'll be the fishtail scroll that's in reverse. So go ahead and stick that in the fire. You also want to heat a bit of the back section of this piece as well. That will, that will help alleviate any stressing. We don't want kind of a hot, cold line that you may or may not get there. So we want it to kind of have a nice, even heat, if we will. The main principal difference that we're gonna do is we're gonna switch to a wooden hammer that's shaped like this, like a double cross peen. And we're gonna use that to take and help direct and drive our scroll over the edge and give it a little bit of uh, convexness to the outside of it. So it's still heating up here. Get a hold of it. Also, it's very important to make sure that if you want one, to not forget to put in your touch mark in one of these final stages before you're done finishing it up. Because that'll get increasingly more difficult once the scroll is really going there. So you want to get a good even heat out on the tip of the scroll. You want the tip of the scroll, the fishtail, to be the hottest portion of the piece. That way it rolls more natural. It starts there at the tip first. All right, we're good and hot. Over the edge of the wood block, I'm going to start rolling this. rolling it out and now we're going to start hammering it back towards ourselves a little bit on each corner don't take this too much at once take your time so i'm going to go ahead and heat that back up and while that's heating up for just a moment i'm going to go find my touch mark okay so i'm going to get my touch mark out and i'm going to take and punch this in a semi-inconspicuous location, if I can, that won't damage my designs that are on top. I'm just choosing to do right into the side there. That should be good enough for what I'm working on. I'm going to go ahead and get this back here. I'm going to make sure we didn't get it crooked. We didn't get any bend, weird bending. We'll come back here. Straighten a bit. There we go. Get rid of the stuff you don't need. And we'll be right back to rolling this up and scrolling this up. All 
Be careful of letting this get too scaled up too at this point. You don't want it to spend long soaking times in the fire. We want to take, and take nice even heats on this and get this to start rolling up and going like it's supposed to fairly quickly without it having a bunch of uh, soaking heats. If it soaks in the fire at temp, you're oxygenating it, you're oxidizing it that whole entire time. So don't let it soak too long. Be fairly efficient and quick with your work as you go along here and you'll have a much better time. Okay, again, supporting it with my wood block. I'm providing a little bit of arch to this as I hammer this piece right on around. Hopefully you can see how that's starting to turn out there. It's starting to look pretty darn good. We still got a long way to go to get this to curve just ever so and get it where we want it to be, but that's okay. We're gonna switch up to the larger mallet here on the next heat. We've got a curvature in it, that convexness that we're looking for. And we're gonna go ahead and get this heated back up, just the scroll in. We're trying just to get that fishtail hot and not much else. We'll switch to this much larger thing. This helps to have a wood block, a stump, just a big heavy stump that sits in your shop to do this type of work on. But you can make do with a four by six treated timber or something. One quick note on treated timbers and stuff, they do have a chemical in them of treatment, so you don't want to be breathing the fumes that are coming off of that. Uh, so hold your breath, use a big fan to blow the smoke away, or do it out in a well-ventilated area. I'm not making a bunch of jump scenes in between this because this is a very fast, quick process at this point. You've put all the hours into it. Now it's just a matter of working and manipulating the scroll to a, to a good effect. All right, hammer this straight back on itself. I'm just trying to get that to curve right on down. Alrighty, I'm really happy with that. We'll set that down. Well, set it up here for a second. We'll brush this real quick. When I'm done here finishing it and everything, I'll get you guys some up close views of this piece. Uh, that way you guys can definitely see how all of this kind of came together at the end here. It looks really good. Big takeaway, if you're doing a Baroque style or Gothic style bottle opener, is to just take your time with it. It's okay to put that extra bit of work and effort into this to start with and really get it looking good um, for your customers. So now I need to heat this up and I actually need to tap it open because it's kind of closed down on the mouth that we're gonna use to open up the bottle. So I'm gonna stick that with a scroll up You shouldn't have a blasting fire. You should just have a hot fire, say a bright orange to bright yellow temperature. Don't go crazy with it. You don't need a white heat. You don't need a welding heat at this point in time. We don't need that. We just need a nice, even heat to push things where we want them. Got a nice heat here. Gonna support the area I don't want to move open and drive out the piece that I do. That'll work pretty good. I give it just a little bit of a tight tap down. All right, that's looking really good. I think I'm happy with that. So now we'll go ahead and brush her up good. This is the heat to really lay into it with the butcher block brush.
hopefully you guys can see how that's really looking there. I'm really happy with how this turned out after all. Um, there were some few moments of doubt there, to be honest with you. When I come back to it, I didn't even know if this was a video I wanted to keep on producing just because of how long the video was. So make sure to comment down below in the comment section if you enjoyed longer a long video like this. Um, if it's not really your thing, that's all right too. I understand this took a long time to get done. But the result's definitely worth it, I believe. So I'll get you guys some closer up videos after we get the, uh, some closer up finish up shots a little bit later on here. But now it's time to finish this thing. And the way we're gonna finish this thing is with a little bit of boiled linseed oil. We're gonna do a hot finish. So I'm gonna let that cool on the anvil for a sec. Let's go try to get in here. Get that scrape down. All right, that looks pretty good. So we're gonna let that set for a second and I'm gonna grab some boiled linseed oil. So this is just standard uh, uh, boiled linseed oil you can get from uh, really any hardware store. There's nothing that special about it, uh, to be 100% honest. There's nothing that special about it. Just a simple boiled linseed oil. We're gonna take and get some blue towels here, blue rags. We're gonna just kind of double up some thickness here. So this way when I apply the linseed oil, it can soak into the rag and hopefully protect my hands to a point. We're gonna just, we're just gonna do a little test there. We don't want it to be hot enough that it's charring the rag. Uh, that's, that's kind of a big key there, key point to applying this. You want it to be a little bit on the cooler side. This way the finish actually sticks and stays to the piece. That's a big key ingredient towards the boiled linseed oil actually working. Just below the point that it's that it starts to uh, char the rag, that's the point you want to apply the boiled linseed oil. That'll make for the nicest finish. Just where it stops charring the rag, I should say. Grab this, put this finish on here. This is meant to be a quick finish too, so. And it looks really good on a gothic piece as well, over say like painting it. You certainly could paint it. Um, that is also an option, just putting that out there. But uh, it will generally look a little bit better if you keep with the, say a traditional finish on the piece it'll look better than say if you painted the piece when it comes to doing something that's in the gothic realm and or baroque styling just for the given time and century that it's associated with it looks better to have that natural finish over a processed finish hopefully that's making sense let that cool for a second grab it from the other side Maybe hard to see on camera, but it's definitely darkening out the patina, and that's what we're wanting. One, after you finish this with some boiled linseed oil, a great way of just enriching the look is to take a little bit of just wax. You could be any really candle wax of any kind, uh, but just taking a wax, like a candle wax, paraffin, I like beeswax because it's a more historical approach. Again, um, you can use some of that beeswax to take and help buff the finish to give it like a little bit of an extra shine to it. And that will look really, 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 really superb. So there we go. Got that finish in there pretty good. I do have one little area that I need to get that I can't get my rag into. So I'm just gonna kind of do the, the drain in daub method here. There we go, 
can't get into the underside of that fishtail. So there we go. I was able to get it with uh, just dumping it in. And now we'll just towel it off. Also, I should probably point out at this stage that this is very hot. So this will burn you. The oil can get hot that's on this rag and it can burn you. So take whatever safety precautions you feel are necessary. All right, boil linseed oil finish done. Now all that's left is to let that cool and go open up a bottle.